Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah 39, continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Let's go to Jeremiah number, chapter number 39, verse 1. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged it. So evidently they had uh, met Pharaoh, and Pharaoh went back to Egypt with his army, said, I'm out of here. Verse 2, And in the eleventh month of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. So evidently the walls failed. And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, even... I'm not even going to try to read these names. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the last one is Rabmag. With all the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saw them and all the men of war, when they fled and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, by the gate betwixt the two walls, and they went out the way of the plain. Verse 5. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. So all those princes of Judah that uh, wanted to kill Jeremiah, guess what? They're all dead now. And all the sons of Zedekiah were killed also, right in front of the king's eyes. Verse 7. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. So after he had watched his sons be killed, he made him blind. Verse 8. Well, he was spiritually blind. Why not be physically blind too, right? And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant, the remnant of the people that remained in the cities and those that fell away that fell to him with the rest of the people that remained. But Zebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people, which had nothing in the land of Judah and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So evidently, uh, the poor of the people he left behind, you know, to be dressers of the vineyards and the fields. You know, the farm, let them become farmers, which is probably more than what they ever had when they were in, you know, from Judah. So, you know, he... He left the, uh, the poor, the, the poor became the farmers, and they took care of the crops and the vineyards and I guess the uh, trees, the orchards and all that stuff. Verse 11, then Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. So, evidently, Nebuchadnezzar told 
the captain of his guard, take Jeremiah, treat him well, and whatever he says to do, do it. And you might think, oh, that sounds strange, but uh, hey, the Lord uh, had, uh, you could read the book of Daniel, and the Lord had given Nebuchadnezzar a dream, and an angel had spoken to him when he pronounced judgment upon him, and he ate the dew, I mean, he ate grass, and slept out in the field with the ox and had the dew of heaven cover him every morning. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Nebuchadnezzar wrote, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, chapter number four of the book of Daniel? He did. And God even calls him Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Oh, yeah. So... One day, we'll probably find out that uh, either the Lord or an angel of the Lord told Nebuchadnezzar to treat Jeremiah well. So, he told the captain of the guards, saying, Take him and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guards, sent... And Nebuchadnezzar, whatever. And uh, ugh, forget it. And all the king of Babylon's princes, even they sent and took Babylon out of the court of the prison and committed him unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he dwelt among the people. Now the word of the Lord came into Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil and not for good, and they shall be accomplished in that day before thee. But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. Remember, this guy had interceded to the king for Jeremiah saying, you know, if you leave this guy in the dungeon, in the pit, in the mire, in the mud, he's going to die of, you know, die of thirst, die of hunger. And then uh, the king said, well, go get him. You know, take 30 guys and get him out of the pit. You know, there's no water to drink in a mud pit. Now, I don't think I'd want to drink water in a mud pit, but uh, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. So, evidently, the Lord had pronounced nice things to this one that had looked after Jeremiah and had believed him. You know, it's one thing to hear the words of the Lord. It's another thing to believe the words of the Lord. Yeah, uh, King Zedekiah, where's all your prophets? You know, the ones that said that, uh, you know, the king of Babylon wouldn't take Jerusalem. Oh, uh, where, where's your prophets? Where are they? You know, the ones that said, oh, don't worry about what Jeremiah is saying. He's lying. Where are those prophets that said that the king of Babylon wouldn't take Jerusalem? Where are they? You know, there's a big difference between being a true prophet and a false prophet. So, this is the end of Jeremiah chapter 39. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.